Have you lost weight only to gain it right back after returning to your routine? Did your diet work for someone else but not you? Rockin' That ID Life helps you understand your genetic makeup to find a lifestyle that fits your needs. Together, you and RockinThatIDLife.com can focus on your health and meet your goals today. That's RockinThatIDLife.com. Center Ice Brewery is a proud sponsor of Let's Go Blues Radio. If you haven't heard, Center Ice Brewery beer is now exclusively available at beer stores around town. So make sure you pick some up on your next milk and eggs run. That's Center Ice Brewery. Please drink responsibly. Welcome to Season 10, Episode 32 of Let's Go Blues Radio. This is the fully vaccinated, often in imitated but never duplicated the hottest thing to hit the airwaves since conway twitty the original st louis blues hockey podcast support for let's go blues radio is brought to you in part by rocking that id life.com the home of getting yourself where you want to be physically and by centericebrewery.com st louis's wonderfully crafted hockey themed beer found at local grocery stores and liquor stores in the st louis area we're broadcasting live on wednesday 420 dudes 2022 oh, yeah. it is happy 420 mm. how'd you celebrate today kurt work from home me too <laughs> work from home <laughs> uh got on the treadmill and uh decided i might start re-watching breaking bad i don't know we'll see that's that's kind of 420 related i'll take that it's in the ballpark. Breaking Bad, it's in there. Yep, yeah, sure. Yep, yeah, it's in there. Yep. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. This is franchise episode number 350 of all time. That's what I should be saying happy to you two. Happy 350, 350 Kurt. It's a nice solid number, 350. It Arbitrarily is. cool, right? Yeah, for us it's Just cool, because it's right. Just because it's divisible by 10 and 25 and 50. Well, it's funny at this point, too, because it's like when, when somebody's broken a record, you know, like, uh, you know, let's say Barry Bonds when he broke the home run record after he hit 71. It was like, is it really even exciting how high he goes now? Because he already broke the record for us. It's like no blues pa podcast has gone this far. So does it really matter the numbers anymore? Uh, you know what? To be honest, as far as Barry Bonds goes, it wasn't exciting when he did it because McGuire had just done it. Yeah, that's you know, true. McGuire, he, uh, Bonds broke a record that was a year or two old, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, you know, McGuire broke a record that was, how old was it? 40, 50 years old? Like it was a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a big difference. Yep. Well, anyway, so I am Jeff Ponder, and I'm joined by my favorite setup man on the rink, Kurt Price. And uh, our favorite puck pouncer, Bill Day, is on assignment. Uh, we will be talking about that hockey team that just won't quit getting points. Don't forget to find us on every social media platform, as well as a preferred seller on Facebook Marketplace. That's not really true. Uh, we are <laughs> dual. Say, what? <laughs> <laughs> we are a we are dual live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. So hello to our live audience and thanks for joining us. Uh, Kurt, how's it going, man? How's uh, how's life, man? It's going well. Uh, starting to get busy for me uh, with the uh, coach and softball and I uh, got a pickleball league starting and um, yeah, kids. So it's in summertime and school's getting ready to get out. So uh, playoffs are on the, you know, a couple weeks away. So it's, uh, it's going to be uh, very busy for me. Yep. Yeah. I know how that goes. Well, for me, my, uh, my ice hockey team, we've got a possibility of two games left. If we, uh, if we win this next one, we have two games. If we lose tomorrow, we're done. So part of me, yeah, I mean, obviously I want to win, but man, losing, it'd be like, okay, now I get an off season. Kind of want the off season to be here. Cause this is my more busy time right now too. Uh, you and I hung out on Saturday. So that was fun. We did. We did. Went to the, uh, oh, we can talk about this later or now we'll talk about it now. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk whatever. About it later. whatever. I mean, yeah, no, a Saturday at the, uh, the blues and wild, we had some great tickets, uh, courtesy of, uh, bill's aunt yes which was pretty fantastic the uh bomberito suite that was it. My i've God. never sat there before that was ridiculous yeah, that was great it was uh first class all the way and uh if i ever 
next time I go sit in the uh, slumming it with the regular folk in the regular seats, it's going to be like, man, this, this is, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I, I went to the game last night too, and I was slumming it in the three hundreds. And I thought this is such a different experience <laughs> than what I had on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was great. I, I probably drank a little too heavy. So, <laughs> uh, well, when it's all you can drink and all you can eat, um, yeah, until what, until the, the, uh, all you can drink until the final horn, wasn't it? That, yeah. Was that right? Yeah. It was final yeah. horn. Yep. And final then you had like a, period. yeah. And then you had like uh 30 minutes after the game ends too, to like finish up your drinks, finish up your food. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ladies had fun too. We brought our ladies mm-hmm. and it was fun. Yeah. yeah. Amy didn't know where we were sitting. She just thought we were sitting in our regular, you know, seats and, um, nope. She was like, where are we? And yeah, we, were, we walked out of the parking garage, uh, on the fourth level there. And, and, uh, we're walking by all the nice suites and stuff. And she was like, and she told us later that <laughs> she was thinking, where are our seats? They're going to kick us out of here. We're not supposed to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's and then funny. we go to the Bomberito suite and then uh, she's like, what are we doing? Yeah. What, was, what, what is this? Yeah. I, I yeah. remember I, uh, when, when we first like walked up and they gave us the wristbands, I was purposely looking at her the whole time. And she yeah. just has this look of bewilderment. Like what, yeah. what is happening? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. That was fun. That was yep, fun. It was. Fun game too. Fun game, yes. Little uh, made us a little worried there towards the end in the third period, but uh, they pulled it out. They got the win, and it was uh, fun to be there for that one. And it's going to give... be a point that's gonna, that's going to bite us in the ass. You watch. It's true, but I will oh. say, give give me seven games of that. Those two teams. Whew. Yeah. No, give us that's give us good six. hockey. We'll, no, we'll take it well, four to two. I'll take four, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Right. Of course. Yeah. Four would be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but no, give me a series between those two teams. I am looking forward to that. And that is going to happen, folks. I think it's all but mathematically the case at this point. It's almost impossible, right, for yeah. somebody else. So. Yep. Well, uh, official beers of episode number 350. Remember, you can follow all, each of us on the Untapped app. You can follow me, uh, jponder94. Bill is at billybluenote33. And Kurt is at uh, cprice12. I will kick it off because the Blues have had a winning season, and that's just the way it goes. I'm actually not having beer tonight. Uh, I had a very, very long day, and I probably drank enough beer for myself on Saturday to last <laughs> me the next couple weeks. So I'm, uh, I'm rocking, <laughs> I'm rocking that ID life tonight, folks. Giving me some energy to get through the show, and um, you know, yeah, again. Don't need to drink uh, tonight. I, <laughs> I I got my fill on Saturday, but it was a good time. Well, it was all you can drink. I mean, you yeah. uh, you got your money's worth. Yes, <laughs> I did. Some. Yes, and I did. Some. I feel like I got my money's worth, and you had a lot more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Well, it's funny because like I started making the stupid mistake of like going up to the bar and getting a drink, but we also had a a, a server. And she mm-hmm. would like look over and see, oh, his drink's empty. I'm gonna go get him another one. Holly. Well, what? Holly was her name. Colleen. <laughs> Colleen you know, was I, her name. There's, there, there's a funny story though, is that you remember the conversation? Yes. She said her name, and you said Holly. I thought it was and Holly. Then, and then she corrected you, and I think you said Holly again. I right? did. I did. And then I she said, said Holly again. <laughs> and then she corrected you again. Oh, Colleen. Okay. And then the next time she came back, when I, I, I kind of waved her over and I said, Hey, Hey, next time you, next time you get him a beer, give him his beer and say, by the way, my name is Holly. <laughs> <laughs> she never did though, but she never, she was oh, okay. Okay. I'll do it. I I'll do it. Totally deserve but, she, that. <laughs> but she never did. I thought that would have been hilarious. That would have never did. That would have made my head explode. <laughs> Wait I, was, a I, minute. Was, I was, I was prepared to give her some money just for doing that for my, oh. my own entertainment. And she didn't do it. Well, Holly, if you're watching, you lost out on some money. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it would have been funny. That's funny. Yeah, she... Well, I am so I have such bad hearing when there's a lot of shit going on. That was right when the game was starting. We asked her name, and so they're announcing the lineups, and, and I'm like, Holly? You said Holly? And she's going, Colleen. And then Amy's, like, grabbing on my shirt going, it's Colleen. And I'm like, 
Okay. Well, I, I know it. Holly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and I'm sitting there. I'm like, both y'all, y'all, shut up. I'm trying to watch the watch the game. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm not having I'm not having a beer either. It's a beverage show. I'm having Ooh. good old water because I just got off the treadmill and I just I felt like water, not uh, not a beer, and I didn't have any uh, other uh, you know energy drinks or anything. So I'm just having some water. Is that cup you're holding? Is that Ozark Land? Oh, Ozark Trail. Ozark Trail. Yeah. Yes. I have. They the same are the. One. I love that mug. I, I've got like three of these. They're they're yeah. the best. They're like eight bucks too. Yep. And they'll keep ice in this thing all day long. Oh yeah, it's, literally. It, it's almost as good as a Yeti for about a fifth of the price. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love those things. Yeah, you can get them at Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Fantastic. You can buy yeah. extra lids too. Do you know that? They have like a I lid. I did bin. not. Oh yeah. shit. I didn't start mm -hmm. looking for that. So if you if you lose a lid or whatever, or if you if you buy another container that doesn't have this good of a lid, you can buy an Ozark Trail lid. They usually fit. The more you know. That's amazing. I mm -hmm. I'll remember that for next time. Mm-hmm. Well, we will move into today in Blues History, courtesy of the at St. Louis, or I'm sorry, STL Blues History account over on Twitter. Uh, today in Blues History for April 20th, 2022, in 1969, St. Louis Blues tie an NHL playoff record as they won their eighth straight playoff game versus the LA Kings. The Blues win the semifinals to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals for the second straight season. Let's not talk about what they did after that. Yeah. Also, too, the the Kings uh, won a couple of cups before the Blues got their first one. So, you know, at the time, it's like, hey, we own the Kings. Well, you know. Yep. Revisionist history says, oh, the Kings got two cups before you did. Man, speaking of Kings, uh, I saw probably the worst jersey fall I think I've ever seen. Uh, somebody posted it on Twitter. I guess they were at the Kings and Ducks game. Was that? I, was, I guess that was last night. Uh, somebody had a Ducks jersey, uh, one of the newer ones, and they had Dion 16 on it. Dion 16? Oh. Marcel Dion. Really? And it was an Anaheim oh. Ducks jersey. Why? What the hell? What the hell? Maybe their last right? name was Dion. That's what somebody said. His his last name Possible. damn well better be Dion. Possible. It had because, to be. Because, like, weird... that, is, that is weird to have to mix literally mix the teams it's like getting gretzky on a ducks jersey yeah why would you do that you just wouldn't that's very silly hmm. yeah i saw that and i was like no no those california uh, fans man yeah there's something else especially they're different especially breed. the ones in san jose they're yeah those they guys are, suck uh, not to be trusted no never <laughs> they're the worst <laughs> uh <laughs> april 20th 1981 tony curry scored a goal originally credited to uh, Mike Zook, to set the St. Louis Blues consecutive point streak in the playoffs at nine games. Uh, he beat out Gary Sabarin at eight games in the Blues' 4-1 loss versus the New York Rangers. So uh, do you remember any of anything of Tony Curry, Kurt? No, I was, uh, I was like seven. And uh, I think that was a couple years before I really got into – blues hockey so i uh, i do not remember tony curry i know I'm, i know a yari curry um i know that guy <laughs> i know a yari curry um i know a marie curie right the, i know uh, penicillin woman, right yep and i know uh tony herkus tony herkus right yeah uh tony mckegney yeah um, yep tony danza right um yeah. yep uh but, but, um Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Uh, yeah, Tony Curry, uh, I knew the name, and I think it's probably because I've – maybe because I mean, literally I saw this tweeted last year. I don't know. I recognize the name. Couldn't tell you anything about his play style. No. I, slightly before my time, and that's about all I got to say about that. I was, yeah, 83-ish, you know. That okay. was when I kind of got into it, so. Uh, April 20th, 1989, Todd Ewan received a game misconduct and 10-game suspension for coming off the bench to fight Wayne Van Dorp. Tony Herkus, who we just mentioned, scored a double overtime playoff goal in uh, the St. Louis Blues 5-4 win over the Chicago Blackhawks. Video of the fight and the goal were accompanied with this tweet, so if you want to see those, check it out. Uh, Todd Ewan, um, God rest his soul, right? He's we, We've yeah. lost him. 
Uh, yeah, I, and I, I Todd the animal Ewan. I loved Todd Ewan. Oh, he was uh, fun. Was, was sad when he left, uh, but yeah, that was a great, great, uh, total uh, stereotypical uh, blues uh, fan favorite, right? Um, tough, uh, tough guy. Uh, tough, hard worker. He uh, left it all on the ice. Um, scored a little bit. Um, fun player to watch. And then the Herka Circus, who really never really caught on here. <laughs> I mean, right. he was always, he was like the, uh, I don't know what, what to compare him to another sport, but uh, he was always a highly touted guy that just never quite got to where he was hoped to be and up and down. Yeah. Yeah. There was always, the hopes were always kind of high for him. Uh, was he a, well, he, I forget, was he, he a was roller a, hockey guy too? I don't, uh, I don't think maybe it was half those guys were back yeah. then, but I, I think, uh, he was like a great AHL player. Her yeah. Uh, Herkus, but he just could not stay up here. Yep. Uh, April 20th, 2006, uh, the St. Louis blues win. And this is from, uh, STL blues history's words. He says St. Louis blues win. Some will say they lost the NHL draft lottery. Uh, in that tweet was the story from STL today of that day. So basically this was when the team was so bad, they got the number one pick. And of course the number one pick, which was everybody would have picked him. I don't care what anyone says. Mm -hmm. Eric Johnson was your number one pick that year. So yeah, kind of sad. I, to I see, agree with you. Whatever. I agree. And it's a shame that he was the most highly touted player in that draft. And it was like the thing in the draft was, uh, I'm sorry. No, that was potential, but I think stall, you know, stall Taze, uh, Kessel all had had better careers than Johnson. Johnson's come up. He's a fine defenseman. Now he's been a fine defenseman for a number of years. Uh, but he's not what he was expected to be. And there's a whole golf cart incident here in St. Louis where he was hurt, uh, right. fucking around on the golf court, probably drunk, driving a cart and hurt his ankle or his knee. Yep. Um, so, I mean, it's just a bad, a bad experience with Johnson here. Uh, so and yep. that, that, that whole era, that whole era, man, <laughs> you work hard for that number one pick and it's Eric Johnson. And, you know, it's just, there's a bad, rough, rough era to be a blues fan. Yes. Yes, it definitely was. I, uh, I was so excited about drafting him. I thought, oh man, this is the answer. Like we lose Chris Pronger the year before Johnson's going to step in. He's not going to be the physical guy, but he's going to be the back end for years and years to come. He's going to bring a cup to St. Louis, like all the hopes we had. And it was just, nah, <laughs> nope, he, that's not going to happen. If you want to compare him to a, a defenseman nowadays that, we ex that the height behind him was for St. Louis fans. I think um, you can say now Kale McCarr is a generational talent, right? But we were like expecting tremendous uh, the offensive upside from him uh, along with good defensive play. And it just wasn't the case. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying Kale McCarr like, but you know, his style of play, I, that's what we yep. were expecting. And it just nowhere close to that. Agree. Agree. Uh, April 20th, 2019. This was a big one for Blues fans. Uh, Jaden Schwartz, three. The Winnipeg Jets, two. As the Blues win the series, four games to two. Jaden Schwartz, who scored the big goal uh, in the uh, game prior. Uh, second Blues pair to record all three goals in the series clincher. Uh, apparently, uh, Pedersen did that before. Uh, Schwartz was the fourth Blues player with the hat trick on the series clincher. And that was also Pedersen, Pazlowski, and of course the great uh, Peter Zezel. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's one we all love to re relive, right? I mean, uh, he posted oh. the video with this as well, and we saw it a couple times. I'm sure if you were on social media at all today, just uh, just a great moment in that run that a lot of people kind of forget about with how many great moments were in that run. That was the first huge moment in that in that yeah. run in the playoffs. And that might be my favorite all-time call of John Kelly's. The, how he reacted was just so natural. It wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't planned. It was it was quick. Um, he had to react quick, and he just yelled Schwartz, 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 just like <laughs> yeah. It just like he was just so excited. 
you know, and it was just like, it was pure emotion in his, uh, in his call there, which was fantastic. I loved it. And that was a, I mean, great summing pass by Steen, right? Uh, who uh, centered it in the air, like a foot off the ice and Swartz just bats out of midair. And, well, that was, that was uh, game five. Yeah. We're talking the about the hat trick here in game six. But yeah, no, I, I did. I did. Oh, mention you're right. That moment. You're right. You're right. Game yeah, five yeah. in Winnipeg with what, like 14 seconds left. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That yep, was, yep, yep, yep. that was a great moment yep. too. I mean, that's two yep. right in a row there where we think about the maroon goal. We think about game seven against Boston. This was right there with them. I mean, both those moments. Yep. Big game. That all runs yep. together for me. Yep. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. There was a lot of celebrating going on. Well, speaking of the 2019 Stanley Cup run, uh, when we get back from break here, we're going to talk about the Boston Bruins replica Stanley Cup rings and a clinched playoff berth. And uh, but first, let's hear from our friends over at RockinThatIDLife.com. It's springtime, and I know in my house, it's such a good feeling to open up the windows and let the breeze roll in for new life in my home. Your body's no different. Detoxifying your body can reduce any inflammation, purify your blood, help with weight loss, improve sleep, and boost your circulation. Don't just go after those detoxifiers that only focus on the gut and bowel, though. If you're going to do it, do it for real. The all-new Detox Box from RockinThatIDLife.com cleans all your systems, flushing your kidneys and bowels, detoxifying your liver, and restoring your microbiome for full homeostasis. You'll feel re-energized, restored, and renewed. Make your order now and receive a free detox water bottle with your order. Visit RockinThatIDLife.com or email Dustin at RockinThatIDLife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you to receive an additional 10% off your order. That's RockinThatIDLife.com and give your body that much-needed spring cleaning today. Ah, so peaceful. It, is. Uh, it makes you want to just kick back with a glass of iced tea. Yep. Or I, I guess... And or ID life. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Dep- I mean, you could you could have some of the sleep strips and just sit on your porch and just pass oh, out. Right there, you go. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. That's what you need to do. <laughs> uh, so the Blues have clinched a playoff berth for the forty fifth time in franchise history. Uh, so celebrations all around for that. Uh, it's their fourth consecutive playoff berth. Uh, tenth time in eleven seasons. Uh, they secured the spot with the game that uh, Kurt and I mentioned briefly earlier, the 6-5 win over the Wild in overtime on Saturday afternoon. Tickets for rounds one and two go on sale Friday, April 22nd at 10 a.m. So those will go pretty quick, I'm sure. But uh, Blues are back in the playoffs. Kurt, 10 games ago, people were saying they weren't even going to make the playoffs. 9-0-1 since, and uh, they're looking pretty good. You know, <laughs> I, if 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 fans didn't learn from 2019, not saying that this is anything like that season at all, but, you know, and we've said this on this show a number of times, it's like, calm down. Fans, I mean, overreaction over small sample sizes of the season, um, overreaction and, and uh, uh, ridiculous comments at the trade deadline about what the Blues should do. Uh, and as far as where the Blues are going to go, how they're going to fare, uh, you know, it, it's I coming into this season. It was it was this roster was we talked about it the the deepest fo- group of forwards that we've ever had ever as a franchise, and I think that's that's eventually played out this season in 2019 before the season started. We talked about how. This team was built to be very, very good, and they just didn't get off to that good start. It took until January before they turned it around, and but when they did, they were almost unstoppable, and they went on to win the cup. So I mean, it, it, when, people who make comments about I mean, and it's fun to analyze and break things down on a game by game basis. We do it; everyone does it. But you know, let let's let's keep things in perspective and, and keep the big picture in mind, you know, uh, 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 the way the team plays over a small stretch of games does not define this team over the course of the entire season. You know, you can have, and teams are streaky teams have ups and downs. 
It doesn't, you know, how many times you hear it? It doesn't matter how a team is playing in the middle of the season. It matters how you're playing going to the playoffs. And the Blues are playing very, very well. So, uh, you know, uh, th- points in 13 straight, uh, just came off a nine game win streak. I, they, ca- they, they can't be playing any better they, uh, against Boston. They had their, they had a bad second period, but you know, aside from that, they've been playing great hockey. And I, I, um, I, but you know, it's not going to change anything. It's just sports comments in general. I just, it's irritating to listen to, I think. And, and it's not just social media. It's call you know, sports open line on the radio. It's people who, call in and it's always been happening since I was a kid listening to sports open line. People oh, call yeah. in and just make, you know, overreact over small sample sizes and apply that to the entire season and how the team is as a whole. It's like, oh good lord. I mean, they've they played poorly the past few games and lost a couple bad teams. If that's the way they're gonna play uh, against these bad teams, how are they gonna win in the playoffs? It's November. Yeah, and, and I, I <laughs> oh, yeah, as I say I I say too and, and I said this a couple weeks ago, you know, that it was amplified, I think, at the end of March because typically you've got what four or five games at tops in April, and then it's playoff time. So when the Blues are losing at the end of March, I think it's normally like, okay, here we go, first round loss again. They're playing, they're you know, they're playing down to their opponent. They're not ready for the playoffs. When that was happening, we had fifteen games left, sixteen games left. I mean, it it's like. There's plenty of time for them to write the ship here, folks. And then what do they do? Like you said, points in 13 straight games, just came off a nine-game winning streak against some damn good teams, beat the hell out of the out of the uh, the Nashville Predators, who are a playoff team. I mean, it's just uh, there's a lot that you can turn around in that short amount of time. Hockey is very much like, what have you done for me lately? And the Blues right now, as long as they play 500 hockey, I'm very, very comfortable with them going into the first round against Minnesota. It, it used to be, I mean, it, it happens every year, and not just Blues fans. It's all over. It's, it's like nobody learns from anybody. Yeah. You know, it's like it, it, it's like you said, what have you done for me lately? And that's a stupid thing to say unless you're real late in the season. You know, yep. I mean, if you're, you're if you're if you're struggling now, if the Blues struggle their last three, four games before playoffs, then you're like, okay, okay, guys, come on. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta turn this back around again. So, uh, I, small sample sizes and yep. th- this team is who we thought they were. I, 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 that's, that's all I'm going to say about it. I think, uh, the goaltending has covered up some of the defensive issues that we've had, um, which is fine. And which you got to have that, um, you know, you, you got to have good goaltending, and the Blues have it right now. I mean, Huso is playing fantastic. Uh, Bennington has recently shown that hopefully he has turned it around uh, the last couple of games. So um, I'm not ready to give the reins back to him. Why would you? Uh, that's no. silly to me. I, you know, Huso oh. plays fantastic. For the most part, Huso plays fantastic almost all season long, and Bennington is struggles most of the season. Uh, and he turns it around a couple, two, three games, and all of a sudden, you know, we give it back to him. No, stop asking that question too. I don't, I don't know why anybody would. Why would they change that now? They talked about it on the radio the other day. Uh, why would you go away from Huso now f- as a starter for game one? And even if he loses game one, I think you go back to him in game two. Now, if he loses game two, doesn't look overly impressive, then it's a Holtby situation, Grubauer Holtby situation in Washington. When Washington won the cup, I think you go back. Uh, maybe you go back to your other guy, depending on how the game went and how the goal is playing. But, you know, that's a bridge you cross when you come to it. Let's yep. uh, let's just get there first and see how it goes. No, I agree. I think all that, that what Bennington's doing now is showing if Huso struggles, guys, you've still got a Stanley Cup winner back here. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I can step in and still be a great goalie for you, which, again, I said we've said this on the show a lot of times. How good was he last year against Colorado? I mean, yeah. yes, they lost oh, four games, God. but he was phenomenal. So what he's proving now is, guys, I can still do that. So if Huso, for whatever reason, gets hurt, let's cross our fingers on that one. If he, um, you know, doesn't play well, then you just got to just, just proof, again, why you need two good goalies in the NHL. And that's what the Blues have right now. It, it's a, it's like, it's like Blues fans live and die on small sample sizes. They'll ignore the large sample sizes. 
you know, like like Huso's body of work this season has been tremendous. You yeah. know, he's top was a top five in GAA and mm-hmm. top in save percentage, whatever it is, top eight in save percentage, what top five in save percentage, top eight in GAA, whatever it is. It's it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bennington is you know twenty eighth, thirty, whatever it is. Um, and they'll so they'll ignore the huge body of work of Bennington this season, but they want to focus on his last couple games. It's, and so they want to like praise somebody for the last couple games and, and, and also tear someone down for the last couple games or a team down for the, the last couple games. It's so weird to me to ignore it's, the large sample size and then just focus on the small and then take the small as how the, who that team is and not go by the big picture, larger sample size. So strange to me. Yep. Well, and I'll say too, um, I find it weird how um, some people, and we've talked about this, are anti Huso or anti Bennington. And it's like, I am only rooting for Huso or I am only rooting for Bennington. And it's like, that, how about you just root for your team to win? Like, whoever's in the net, that's who you want to, to play well. Like, why do you have to pick one? It's okay to like both that, of them. We had that with Allen and Bennington in 19. Yeah. There, there were there were uh, Allen fans that were dead set against uh, Bennington being the guy. They they said, okay, it's time to get Allen back in there. Why? Yeah. Bennington is playing out of his mind. Yeah. Why do you need Allen back in you there? Play for, the hot I mean, hand. You, get, you play the hand. You give Allen starts to give Bennington rest, and that's it. You, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I, you say, St. Louis fans, and I, just speaking from my experience with them, because I've experienced, I've interacted with them more than any other fan base, but I've seen it in other fan bases too. But St. Louis fans are no different. They get, they get goaltending wrong all the time, and it's oh yeah, it's frustratingly, mind-bogglingly fascinating <laughs> yeah. about how you can just constantly get it wrong. Um, and you know, this, and and the same thing now that I guess people are loyal to goalies and I'm, you know, I'm, I I love certain players. I have my favorite players like anybody else, but I'm a team guy. First and foremost, I've always said, you know, put the guy in that gives you the best chance to win period. I don't care who it is. I want to win as a team in 2019 that, that they, they played the hot hand and we won as a team period. It worked. So yeah, and, and to go along that. with that, Jordan Biddington, I will still say, is still my favorite player on this team. But okay. I am I am all for, this is Huso's net. Like, as much as I love to see Biddington out there, like, when he gets a start, I, I get a little more amped up, and I'm like, all right, let's see what you got, Jordan. But, like, you don't take the net away from Billy. Like, this this is no, Huso's net no. right now. Yeah, he, he, he has, I mean, what, how... If you if you take the net away from Huso and give it to Bennington, you'll what do you have to do to earn the number one job? You've got the former number one playing inconsistent and flat out poor half the season, and you've got your backup playing out of his mind on a heater almost all the entire season, top five going the league, top three most of the season, and you wouldn't start him in the playoffs? No. Absolutely. I, I, I I don't think there's an intelligent uh, argument to be had to go with Bennington in the playoffs uh, right now. No, I agree. And it's it's all about emotion and heart. You know, like I said, there are people who Bennington, they love, which because he got, I mean, face it, I, he got a cup for the Blues. And so I will I, always love him no matter what he does. Yeah. And he, like I said, still my favorite player. But I got to think about the team that's on my hat right here. Right now, yeah. our better chance is with Huso and Net. So you have to roll yeah. with Huso. Me, me rooting for Bennington is not going to help this team win. Like, like, you know, I like Bennington, you know, I'd like him to start. That's not good for the team. Why would I, why would I want that? I mean, yeah. now granted, I'm not saying that he would, we would lose him in that. I'm saying that you go with the better chance. And that's who. So, uh, Ken Morris, yep. YouTube chat says, uh, the blues room on St. Louis post dispatch forum. That's called blues room now. Uh, no, I think it's has a lot of talk. members posting crazy blue stock. Don't they always? It's always, oh, they always have been. Well, Bill that's called the responds. asylum for a reason. Yeah, that's what Bill says. They yeah, call yeah. it this asylum for a reason. It's <laughs> always. I mean, that goes back to, what two thousand and what? Oh, one. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while. Two thousand. It's asylum. Oh, it's a terrible place to talk hockey. It's just crazy people. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, so again, <laughs> we mentioned we mentioned these earlier. We'll go through these games real quick. Blues beat the Wild six five in overtime, and at the time, it moved the Blues into sole possession of second place. Uh, even though it was in overtime against the Wild, uh, it was their eighth straight win. Uh, Blues surrendered a four one lead in the third period. Dominated gameplay for the most part until that frame. Uh, Shen scored a uh, fifty six seconds into overtime. And that gave him a goal and two assists, and uh, Buchnevich assisted on that goal. So each of them at the end of the night had a goal and two assists in the game. Obviously, none bigger than that last goal. And uh, Vladimir Tarasenko scored in his fourth straight game. And I didn't put it in the notes here, Kurt. Um, Robert Thomas, uh, I know he extended his point streak. Was it to nine at that point? At that point, uh, what it's at it's at twelve now. Is it twelve? So it would have been ten. Yeah, I think it's twelve. That sounds right. I yeah, twelve or thirteen. No, yeah. thirteen you know point streak. Yeah, team. Yeah, well, yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, yeah, that that line. I mean, obviously Shen scores and has a big game as well, but the Buchnevich Tarasenko Thomas line. It's just unfair how good that line's been. And and Buchnevich. I mean, it, it, should we say it again? You know, for Sammy Belay. And uh, what was second? I mean, it's, 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 come on. I, 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 that trade, I mean, I know the Rangers didn't want to pay him, but what we gave up to get him, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, know. I get not wanting to pay a guy, but. Can you imagine got, that Rangers roster with Booch Navich on that team right now? Because they're fucking yeah. good. Yeah, they're good, and I, I and Bushnevich having a career year, so, so it's a good career move for him to be on this line. Does he put up those numbers of the Rangers? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe he's having, maybe he's the, he. I mean, it's hard to imagine him clicking much better with anybody else. I mean, he's been fantastic. Yep, I agree. Uh, so the Blues destroy the Predators are in their home ice, eight to three Sunday early evening. Uh, Kurt, I was so excited because. If the score would have stayed eight to two, I would have had this line to say on the show. Uh, man, so the Predators lost at home uh, by a big score. You ate to see it. <laughs> eight, yeah. You ate to see it. You ate, ate to, to see, it. see it. Ate to yeah. see it. Ate to see it. Yeah. Somebody put that on uh, social media. I saw that. Someone. Uh, did they? Somebody, you and somebody else share a brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that person's very smart. <laughs> uh, so this was uh, the ninth straight win, seven goals in the second period in this one. Shen, and Ky- Shen Kairou and Callie Rosen all had two goals each. All of us were, I think, uh, well, I this was on Easter and, you know, we had a lot of family stuff going on, both families. So it was really hard to catch this game and the Cardinals game. Um, so okay. I was kind of watching behind, you know, like we got the the game on during dinner or whatever but yeah i think everybody in in the world was going oh come on rosen let's see a hattie my i had an issue with this game and it had nothing to do with the game itself it had to do with uh them being bumped from bally's midwest to bally's extra because of the cardinal game was on bally's midwest right and so i didn't think about it you know my dvr is set to record all the blues games um, and you know, Spectrum's DVR being a piece of shit, uh, and their service being a piece of shit, and their which I'll I, I'll get into later uh, with my rant. But uh, my DVR didn't get this game. It didn't switch. It didn't recognize the the schedule. Didn't update oh, on my Spectrum. D- even though we knew a few days in advance, right? Uh, it didn't update. I didn't think to check it. Um, and so I get home, and I'm like, it's not on there. I'm like, well. Okay, I'll, I'll go on to ESPN Plus and I'll I'll watch it uh, there. And it wasn't on ESPN Plus. I don't know why. Hmm. It wasn't there. I, there were other games there. That game was not on there. I couldn't watch it. Was this like, Sunday what? night? Yes, this was Easter. Getting back from huh. yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm like, what? So I had to go on to an Ill- illegal stream, right, and uh, watch it and. I ended up, I th- thought I saw the score at some point trying to play it, uh, but I pretended I didn't. And uh, so I had to watch it on my PC, but it was, you know, it's fucking company it's making me so fucking bullshit hard to watch. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, I'm laughing during this game. It's uh, uh, eight to three. And, you know, it couldn't have happened. To, I mean, the only team better to be eight to three is what? Probably Colorado. 
Uh, At this right point, now, Colorado and then even Minnesota with uh, the Minnesota a playoff matchup. Vegas would be nice to beat eight to three. Boston, um, Boston, <laughs> yeah, a handful of teams, and the Predators are up there yep. uh, to just smoke them on their home ice. Yep. Um, well, yeah, and then and, you know, and, and they didn't. You know what? They did not. On their third goal, the Predators fans did not do the "You Suck" chant. I was waiting for, to hear it, and they didn't do it. Oh yeah, I, you don't do that. And, and that, that made point. me made me smile because I'm like, <laughs> because they 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 you know they're all thinking it. It's like no, we can't say it because we're down eight to three. <laughs> yeah, right. Can't do it now. Yep. That uh, no, and I'll say too, like I I was a little worried about this game with the Blues clinching a playoff berth the night yes. before or the day before, yep. uh, and having a big emotional game against Minnesota, and then they you know and they had. Who's in that that night? Then they got Bennington the next night, and I thought, oh my God, they're probably not going to play well. You know, they're riding this big streak. It's going to be hard to like get up for another emotional game. And uh, yeah, they let up the first goal, and I thought, oh boy, here we go. Well, then yeah. they go out and they just stomp them. I mean, they they played Blues hockey to a T. They didn't let them in or leave their zone. Uh, they picked. Soros apart in that game. Riddick was poor, was pulled apart. I mean, God, that Ky- was a Kairou's uh, second goal where mm-hmm. he had all that time. He even lost the puck, waited for him to open up, and then just slid it through his legs. I was like, oh, yeah. my God, it doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> you mentioned the wild game, the 6-5 the to five overtime win, uh, and I, I didn't mention that, that uh, allowing them to come back, as fun as that game was, and as exciting as the overtime goal was, um, that point that we gave them is going to come back to bite us in the ass, and it could cost us second place. Yeah, you watch. That's true. That's I mean, true. As, that that's the only thing about that entire day that I'm like, motherfucker, god damn it. Yep. You know that that's just giving them a point in that in that game that we had a four to one lead in the third period. Oh, and they were dominating. And we had a four to one lead and a five on three. And I turned to you and I said, this game's over. We're going to score on this power play, five to one, done. And they didn't score. And then the Wild scored not long after that. Yeah, it was two, 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 three minutes later. Yeah, and then I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, four to two, it's a two-goal game. I don't like that. And then, and then, yeah, Pareko has that brain fart throw up behind the net that on the game-tying goal. Anyway. Yep. So in this game against the Predators, Tarasenko and Nathan Walker also scored. Tarasenko's goal was in his fifth straight game, so he's on quite the streak. And yes, Robert Thomas did get another point in this game, which is just ridiculous. Uh, So the uh, Bruins come to town last night. Again, I was in attendance for this one. Uh, Bruins end the Blues' nine-game winning streak in a 3-2 overtime defeat. But uh, like we mentioned earlier, the Blues still have a 13-game point streak. So I uh, want to talk about the ring giveaway last night. So first, I will hold up my original. So this is the one that I bought or, well, that I got after the Blues won the Cup. And There's mine. The same, I think the same general thing. Yeah, so keep, keep, yours, keep yours up. So now here's the one they gave away last night. It's a little bigger than the ring that I got, and you can kind of tell by the comparison there. Uh, and But, man, it is beautiful. It is a very, very nice ring. Um, Kurt, where you have the player on yours, I'm not sure who you have. Uh, O'Reilly. Yep, that, me too. Uh, it this? has. It says history made, and it's a picture of two blues holding up the Stanley Cup. So that was on the replica last night. But it's got the inscription on the inside with – the series wins. Um, so yours, the only thing yours says, it's missing. Yours says history made right there. Yep. Yeah, I'll see if okay. I can let's see if I can get it in the camera there. It's kind of hard to do. It's a little close. Okay, where the name is it says history made. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. And it says um, and it, is that NHL right there? Where where because uh, mine says O'Reilly. Yes. Mine has O'Reilly, yeah. and the number ninety. Where yours says NHL. Okay, so it's tweaked yep. a little bit. Okay. Yeah, they tweaked it a little bit. But and uh so on our rings, it's got play Gloria on the actual yep. like finger part. Uh that yeah, is not on this one. Part. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I mean, this is an unbelievably nice give probably the best it looks I good. will say the best giveaway they've ever had. 
Uh, they've had some pretty nice giveaways. This is a Cardinals level giveaway. This is this is absolutely beautiful. So great work by the yeah. Blues promotional team. To uh, are you to surprised it took them uh, this long to get that giveaway for the fans? I think they've just been waiting to play the Bruins. Honestly. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point. That's a good yeah, yeah that's a good point. Sorry, let yeah, because I got, th- I got this camera. one. Uh, there we go. You know, the summer after the summer after the Blues won. So yeah, yeah, me too. In nineteen. Yeah, I really think it would have been the next season, but uh, the Bruins weren't come. Well, I don't know. Did they announce that they were going to do it? Maybe they wouldn't have done it last season or the the season COVID know. hit. I don't know. It did, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, the Cardinals give away. Uh, Hell, I just got last uh, last uh, Cardinal season. I got an '85 National League Championship ring, Vince Coleman's as a giveaway. I saw that. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately for my big fat fingers, uh, this still does not fit on my ring finger, but <laughs> still looks cool side by side. But yeah, so I can I have two pinky rings now. So there we go. Yeah, baby. I got the. I'll put them both up there. The Cardinals. Uh, Nice. Cardinals, the 85 championship ring as Vince Coleman and the, and the blues one. You can't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to wear both these rings. You can't. Fucking it's wear impossible. These together. <laughs> no, no absolutely big. not. Absolutely not. Um, so, uh, Buchnevich, uh, puts the blues up one, nothing a little over midway through the first on the power play. Uh, this was just a beautiful goal. Both blues goals in this game were, were pretty, very pretty. Uh, Kyrie received a pass down low, no look passes behind him to find Tarasenko on the other side of the net. And then instead of him firing it, which like we said before the show started, uh, everyone in the building and anyone watching on TV thought that's a one-time shot from Tarasenko, right? Nope. Yeah. He slides it over to an open Buchnevich in the slot who one times it just a beautiful goal. Oh, and again, with it, those three guys out there, I mean, my God, beautiful stuff's going to happen. That, that was an elite play. I don't I don't know how you stop that or how you defend that. I mean you can't blame the goalie. The defense is right there, but they're expecting Tarasenko to shoot. They're not the coverage isn't lax. It, it was pinpoint passing. Um just fantastic. And that's the way this offense is capable of playing. And they did in this in this first period. They played really well. Yeah, and, and again, you you know, look back at the the streak they're on and it's like my God, they're just they keep playing like this, they're gonna score another six goals in this game, you know. And yep. uh Swayman's Swayman's played great for the Bruins, don't get me wrong, but you think, you know, they kind of opened him up last time they played, just last week, and you're thinking something really awesome is going to happen. And uh, fortunately, that's not how the rest of the game went. Yeah, he had a good first period. He uh, did. I mean, despite the goal against, you know, but he had a good yeah. first period. He did. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, who uh, is kind of become a thorn in the Blues' side. He's uh, he's played some good hockey against the Blues this season. Uh, he ties it for Boston early in the second. Uh, he wrapped around, and Huso made uh, the, a nice initial save, but uh, give credit to DeBrusque, who stayed with it, poked it over Huso's shoulder. Uh, so originally, they ruled this no goal. I don't think the referee saw it go underneath the crossbar and in. Not at all. Uh, but, I mean, it was one of those where, like, you know, I, like I said, I was sitting in the 300s. You could see it from my angle, how clearly it was in. And, uh, yeah. yeah, further review showed the puck did go over the crossbar just barely. So you can see yeah. why the referee had problems seeing it. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, some it people might. Some came, people next to me said corner, that's that's yeah. one Huso's got to have. I would also argue that's one that I think, you know, he had a lot of time alone in front of the net. I, Huso makes the original save. I just think that's a nice play by DeBrus to to stay with it, it and poke it over who's, him. Huso made the original save. It's a rebound goal, and uh, Scandell was slow getting across uh, yeah. to defend the the him coming out from behind the goal. That's the way it yeah. was, and Scandell was so slow that uh, DeBrus got the shot off and then got the rebound and put it in. So, yep. uh, you know, you could you I mean, if you want to blame Huso for coming off the post, that's kind of rough. I mean, he makes the save, doesn't know where the puck is for us for a fraction of a second. And then finds it as DeBrusque is shooting and tries to get back. He's only off the post by like six inches. Yeah. You know, and but DeBrusque puts it right over his shoulder there where he came off the post. And it's just one of those things where sometimes that puck just finds that small opening for a, when it's open just for a fraction of a second and it just goes in. Um, I don't, I don't blame Huso too much on that goal. I, I, I like the fact that they made the first save. 
uh, to me, then uh, where's your defense, right? Get that rebound well, uh, out of there. And to me, this is one of those plays, too, where it was just such a smart, quick play by DeBrusque that it's hard for me to even really like blame the defense. I mean, yes, he's wide open over there, and you got to get somebody over there on him. But again, just a very slick play by him, and then the effort to just continue to poke when you see the pucks free. Um, I just I give a lot of credit to DeBrusque on that goal. I like the way he played that. Taylor Hall makes it 2-1 Bruins after a Blues turnover along the boards. Uh, Krug tried to slide it over to Nathan Walker on the right boards, but Eric Halla intercepted it and sends it to the point. Derek Forbort, For, Forbert, Forbert uh, shoots toward the net. His name is Derek Forbert, not Derek Forbort, Forbert, Forbert. Uh, Hall is wide open in front for a beautiful tip-in. Blues were kind of crowding the middle. I think kind of didn't expect that puck to get through. But it did, and uh, Hall was, I mean, you want to talk about all alone in front of the net. Hall could have had yeah. seven whacks at that puck before a blue sticks on him. And I mean, he it had wasn't all a, the time. Yeah, and it, was a, it wasn't a hard shot, but it was a, I mean, I, I don't know how familiar people are with tipping pucks, but, you know, on that kind of a shot, it's easy to tip. I mean, these are professionals. They're, they're going to tip that uh, all day long. And Hall tipped it down, and it, and it and it got by Huso. And we talked before the show. I watched a replay of this goal, and you know Bertuzzo is the last Blues defenseman back, and he's skating from the end red line on the right side of the goal up to where the crowd of players is. Never sees Hall sliding in uh, behind the defense. Never looks over there. Never sees him. Um, and so he's all alone, like you said, Jeff. Just hey, he could have he could have he had a, a chance for a number of chances if the situation presented itself for a couple of rebounds. Uh, yep. He had all the time in the world. So uh, again, I, again though, that, I mean, it's kind of like the same goal, the, the same as the first goal, you know, all alone there by the net. A um, little, little situational awareness there uh, with the, with the, maybe it should be a little better with the D. Uh, Bertuzzo, you know, I mean, it's tough. Um, he's only open for a couple seconds, but that's all it takes. Oh, and, especially uh, a guy with the skill of like a Taylor Hall or really anybody right. in the top six of Boston. I mean, right. you give them that time, they're going to score. Sure. I just didn't like the way Bertuzzo played it. He didn't look over there at all. He just went back to the pack and didn't see Hall over there coming in. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. He missed him. Yep. Yep. I agree. Bad defense. Uh, great effort by Huso. Oh, yeah. But just, yeah, unfortunately, that's just a play. You're going to lose out on nine times out of ten when it happens. Got to gotta cover that. Got to tie up sticks. That's the most important. Uh, with just three seconds remaining in the second period. So the Blues are down 2-0 in this period, uh, which is very rare for them. The best second period team, a team who just scored seven goals in the second period the uh, game before. Robert Thomas continues his ridiculous streak, scored a beaut to tie the game at two. Boston was trying to kill the last, tech and t- ugh, last 10 seconds of, of the play by jamming the puck along the boards in their zone. Give credit to Nick Letty and Thomas, who worked it out free to awaiting Tarasenko, who literally just curled the line and then backhanded it in front when he saw Thomas was going there. Kind of similar to uh, the the goal by uh, that we saw from Hall. Uh, Thomas was just right there in front. Beautiful deflection as uh, he rotated his body, sent it to the opposite direction, and really Swayman had no chance on this. So uh, the Blues just... You know, we talk about funking, fucking relentless, right? Uh, that's what they were on this play. Uh, no, you're not just going to freeze the puck in your defensive zone. We're going to take it, and we're going to score, and we're going to go into the third period tied 2-2. After a, and this was a rather sloppy period by the Blues. Second period was not a good period. Boston owned the period. I shot them handily. Um, and the Blues looked out of sync. They had a pretty good first period. Second period, passes were off, in the skates, things weren't connecting. Uh, couldn't get the transition game going. It was sloppy. It was frustrating. Um, uh, and you know, they were only losing two to one, uh, as the second period is coming to a close. And I turned to my, I, I tweeted as I turned and I told turned to my daughter. And I said, you know, if, if the blues, they had a power play, right. Uh, with a few minutes to go in the second period, and I thought if they can score a goal here and, uh, go into the third period tied two to two after this period that they had a bad one against Boston. I said I'd be I'd be it'd be fantastic, and then sure enough, uh, with two whatever is two point four to go, uh, fantastic tip. And uh, my daughter told me she goes, uh, 
uh, as soon as Thomas scores, she goes, Dad, I did what you said you do. You, you, you're you like, if I'm home watching the game and I'm with, with her and uh, something happens, and I'll be like, I was going to say, you know, don't yeah. do that because that can happen, you know. And uh, I didn't do it. And, and she goes, I was thinking in my head. As soon as Tarasenko got the puck at the blue line, I said, they're going to score. <laughs> they're going to score. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. And I was like, oh, you know, she's too young to lie about that. So I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I believe you. <laughs> uh, so Chris Bray, I'm guessing he just tuned in. He says, did you guys go? If so, did you get rings? Uh, I went. So this is <clears throat> this is the one I already had. And this is the one that I got last night. And again, very, very beautiful. Good stuff. I already I already had uh, a ring. So I've got the I got one of the replicas from I got it in 19, Mr. Beret. I didn't yeah, go. You know, uh, you know, I uh, I was shocked. So my wife couldn't go last night. We didn't have a babysitter. So I brought one of my friends and um, I decided, you know what? I already got, you know, the, the real thing. I was like, I'm going to give this to Jessica. Let her have it. I texted her a picture of it. I said, this is yours when we get home. And uh, when I got home, uh, she was not interested. She's like, I don't care. I don't want it. She goes, you can just keep it. And I'm like, do you want my real one? And I'll take this one. And she's like, no. And I'm like, you don't want one. I was like, you're a blues fan. She's like, I just don't care about stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know. I guess I really don't with a lot of stuff, but with like the blues winning the cup, give me all the memorabilia. I'll take it all. Yeah. I, I, have, boxes of stuff I, I have boxes of stuff. I can't even put up. I don't have room for it, but I'll, I'll keep taking stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm the same way. <laughs> it's a, yep. It's a problem. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, the Blues lose this one in OT. Charlie McAvoy wins it for the Bruins. Uh, Bruins worked it deep in the zone, and uh, Tarasenko kind of got caught behind the net, uh, forced Falk to kind of come down lower in front of Huso and be ready for uh, DeBrusque, who was behind the net in case he circled in front. But instead, he found a wide open McAvoy coming in from the near point. Uh, worked it into the high slot, beat Huso over the blocker. So uh, beautiful shot, I thought, from McAvoy. I was listening to the feed uh, when I got home. I, I watched the uh, some of the recap, like, what was it, plays of the night or whatever on NHL Network. And I heard, I guess it was ESPN Plus that had the game last night. And yeah. uh, one of the announcers said something like, that's one Huso should have. And I wow. thought, I don't think really? so. No. I was Why? like, I, I thought that was a great shot by McAvoy and a great play by DeBrus to get it to him. It's a high danger scoring uh, area. Yeah. And it was a well-placed shot, uh, upper corner, per, almost yep. upper, almost all the way upper corner. Yeah. I, I, it was, it was hard. It was a, was a great, it was, it was a great shot. shot. I, I don't, yeah. I don't blame. I mean, believe me, if, 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 if I think a goalie should have the puck, I'll say so. I didn't, I was not, my first thought was not to blame him at all on that shot. I thought it was a good shot. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought the same thing. And, uh, and you know, and I kind of called out Tarasenko there. It was it was just one of those plays where the puck's behind the net. You got two blues back there. I don't remember who the other forward was that was out there. But, they're you know, they both think they got a good chance of getting this puck. DeBrusque ends up works in it lo working it loose. Tarasenko's trying to get back to cover someone else because DeBrusque was basically Falk's guy. And like I said, that just kind of the, the coverage just gets a little screwed up in situations like that. Um, really no blame on anyone. Just a, again, a, a nice play by DeBrusque and then a great job by McAvoy to make sure he was wide open to receive that pass. Uh, it's so one of those things, it's just one of those things in, in, in overtime, the blues never had the puck. So Boston yeah. wins the face off at center. Boston has, they, they come into the zone. They leave the zone. They come in, they leave, they come in, they score, <laughs> you know, and I told my daughter when I watched the game, I'm like, you know, if you lose the face off in overtime, you might not touch it for two or three minutes. Yep. Uh, and that's what happened. I mean, it didn't last that long, less than a minute, but still, you know, if you lose the face off, good luck getting it back because it's a puck possession game. Yep. Yeah. And, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, Kirk, but like seeing two overtime games in a row. Now the blues won pretty quickly against Minnesota, but, um, Seeing this game when, like you said, the the Bruins are circling back, bringing it in, circling back. I'm, you know, watching it live in person. I'm just like, this is kind of boring. Like, this is not oh, yeah. exciting to me. You know, like even on, yeah. on TV, it's like, yeah, it's exciting when your team has the puck. But when you don't, it's just or like uh, last night I watched uh, Senators and Canucks after I got home. 
and they went to a, a full five minutes of OT. And it was just not exciting to me because it was yeah. just constant skating back, waiting for the perfect pass. And it's just, I think Some, that there needs to be something implemented to to kind of curb the skate back into the neutral zone stuff. Sometimes teams don't do it, but far too often they do that. And that's teams that, and we talked about it on the show a number of shows ago, that, that teams have figured out how to ruin the excitement of three on three OT. Yeah. It's not... It's not what it used to be. Every, every once in a while, you'll see teams got running and gunning in the overtime, and it's fun and exciting. But you know, over half the time, it's the teams are just you know coasting in, coasting out, and they just wait for the other team to make a mistake or try and make a line change, and then they try and they try and uh, attack that. Um, and so you just you just wait and be watching teams go in the zone, out of the zone, in the zone, out of the zone. It's like come on. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I agree. They they they've something. I don't know what I, I mean. I haven't. Really I mean, in, get, in, detail. in basketball, you can't go back past your center ice line, your center court. Once you have, you possession. can't carry. Right, right. So maybe that's something at, at the very least. Say you can't go past the red line. So that way, maybe yeah, they're circling out of the zone, but teams will know like we need to crowd the neutral zone because they can't go back past the red line. Yeah, something like that. I, that I say, yeah, if they could test that out and see how that would work. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Something, like that. It, something needs to be done, though. Uh, so, Huso, uh, 32 for 35 in this game. Oh, Played a really good on, on. Derek, sorry. I mean, Derek said uh, NBA shot clock during OT. That's interesting. Shot clock. Whew. Yeah. So, I guess, would it, I guess it would restart once you get a shot on goal. Yeah. Um, that would be interesting. That is. Yeah, like you got 30 seconds to get a shot on goal. Yeah, you have possession. You have thirty seconds. If you don't get a shot on goal, what is it? A face off in your defensive zone, or or yeah, yeah, or neutral, I guess. Yeah, or neutral. I don't know if it's, that's interesting. I I'm not. I would like to see that tested, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I think we've talked about it before. You have the lower leagues. They've tested oh. this kind of stuff. <laughs> Test it out. Chris says, uh, YouTube chat, go back to ties. I have, I have opinions on this <laughs> about going back to ties. I hated <laughs> yes, ties. I, I hated, I hated ties when they had them <clears throat> and I was so glad to see them go away. Um, even though, you know, the, the overtime and the shootouts not perfect and some call it a skills competition. And I, I get the idea there, but, um, to me, go into a game and spending the money that you're spending nowadays and coming away with a tie where nobody wins seems it always felt you know you kissed your sister and it's called kissing your sister for a reason it's like not ideal <laughs> it's a, it's not the best outcome so i i'm i'm all about deciding the game now if you want to do it three points for a, a three points for regulation win two for overtime win i don't know one for an overtime loss do something like that but uh I don't know. I'm. I don't. I don't like ties. Yeah, uh, I agree, Chris. He says he hates ROW and SOW. I do too. I do too. It's not ideal, but again, all this considered, I like it better than ties. I'm indifferent. I actually never had a problem with ties, but I get why people do have a problem with them. So it happens. I get. I get why people hate shootout. I mean, I. I, like I do too. It. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I, I, I like, I'm fine deciding a game that way if it goes that far. I'm not so fine with the five minute three on three. I'd like to extend that. We've talked about this. Go 10 minutes. <laughs> Matt Harris has got comment. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on how pretty the sister you're kissing is. <laughs> That's a good point. And I guess it also depends what part of the country you live in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Matt is in Arkansas, right? Oh, oh, and he's an Arkansas guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think it's okay there. It's legal there. <laughs> it's legal. Didn't, did, yeah. Didn't Republicans just pass that bill? In Arkansas? That's one of my. That's one of my favorite lines from uh, not another teen movie when uh, she, they make the deal like from Cruel Intentions, and she's like, "Well, she goes, if if I'm if I win, you have to have sex with me." And he's like, "But you're my sister." And she goes, "Well, only by blood." <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, it's it's fine for the adult movies. I'm not sure so, so sure it's uh that's something that uh, should be no practiced in real life. Chris Bryce says Nashville. 
Yeah. Nashville? Maybe, maybe in Nashville. <laughs> Chris Bray said uh, college hockey has a three point system. I'm not I'm not against three point system either. I um I think I was at first when they first started talking about it, um back when they went to the uh, uh the shootout system. But uh I think uh now I think I'd like it. I think I was against it then because of oh well, you know, the record for most points in a season would fall in no time, all that good stuff. Now I don't care about the you know most points in the season. Get 140 points. Who cares? I like what Ken Morris says. As long as they never use shootouts to decide playoff games like the Olympics, I agree. Or, uh, or NHL playoffs, yeah. I agree. Or they 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 never use anything other than continuous overtime in the NHL playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, I never I can't, get rid of oh, that. I think fans would riot. Overtime oh, yeah. playoff hockey is. Oh, I mean that's the it, best type of sport to watch there's nothing better it, it, when your team oh my and if it's a game seven oh if it's a game sevens uh sudden death overtime uh you just i mean you, I, if you better have a strong heart because that's Ain't, that's that will, that will kill you <laughs> i always say that that playoff uh extra innings baseball is one of the most exciting things in the world to me that's baseball now make it hockey yeah yeah. That's like a thousand times higher than baseball. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah. so high octane, and you just you can't you can't even sit when you're watching it. It's go, crazy. Go rewatch Game Seven of the Blues in Dallas in 2019. Uh, that that overtime. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I I'd love to. I don't have that game here. Do you have that game on your uh, YouTube uh, station? Uh, the from 2019. Yeah. No, unfortunately, I don't have any of those games on there. We need to. We need to. I didn't find that. I somewhere. need to find out because... to get some more recent games. Because I, think, I the think the most recent I have is 2007. Oh, uh, 2019 game seven. If anybody listening has the game seven between the St. Louis Blues and the Dallas Stars from 2019, uh, let us know. Kind of we, talk we, to, we would like to uh, acquire said game. Might have to uh, talk to my friend and neighbor, uh, Mr. STL Blues History. Uh, maybe he knows somebody who might have those. And it will be fun to do one of the mystery hockey theaters for one of those games. Yes. That'd be a yeah. lot of fun. And if you if you guys listening haven't uh, checked out, we've done a couple of them. The mystery, uh, one of them, two of them. The mystery, the ho- mystery hockey theater where we, we watch a game and Bill, Jeff, and I all comment. Uh, yeah. on the game as we go along. It's a notable game in blues history, right? Um, it's fun. It's like mystery of science theater, but, uh, for hockey. So yep. it's, it's, a, I guess like cheap seats kind of, but an entire game. You ever watch yep. cheap seats? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I, yeah. That's a great show. Yep. So it's a lot of fun and that would be a great game to do. Yeah, we, uh, we should, I'll look into seeing if we can get that over the summer. I know we said we're going to awesome. do roar bacon too. So that'd yeah, be fun. That's yep. two we should definitely do. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I was going to go to break here, but let's go ahead and get to Ken Morris's comment. The late, great Larry King of CNN once said his favorite sporting event is watching a Game 7 of Stanley Cup Final. So yeah. there you go. Even Larry King knows what's up. Uh, so I like beer. Kurt likes beer. Let's hear about some beer, shall we? Do you like hockey? No, of course you do. Do you like beer? Of course you do. Are you 21? Let's hope so. If you answered yes to all of those questions, run on down to your local beer distributor and pick up a 2-4 of Older Inner Lager, the Beauty IPA, or any other delicious hockey-themed beer from Center Ice Brewery. That's right. Center Ice Brewery beer is available at various beer stores around town. So check around for the one closest to you. That's Center Ice Brewery. Let's go Blues. So we've got uh, a couple comments I want to get to. We're going to bleed into uh, what Kurt wants to talk about here. Anybody remembers uh, who's a longtime listener remembers something we used to do called Radio Rants. Uh, this is about to be one of those, so a lot of fun. Uh, Kyle Mead in the Facebook chat says, I was forced to watch the game on Hulu. Really dislike most announcers besides the Blues. Uh, then we've got uh, Kyle Hanner in the YouTube chat was talking about you talking about uh, having the issue where you couldn't watch the, was it the game on Easter? Uh, yeah. He says, uh, happened to me living out of state. ESPN Plus doesn't put off-network replays up. 
until 48 hours after that game was on NHL Network out of market. Uh, Bill Day, our friend Bill Day, says F Bally's and F Spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people were were commenting on this kind of thing earlier, and um, rightfully so. There's There's been a lot of issues, and, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and hand it off to uh, Card here, who's going to talk about some of the issues he's faced recently. Well, I think I, I'm just going to echo the sentiment of a lot of people, um, and just from – just the ridiculousness of some of this. And like I said, it, I, I, it was mentioned that uh, the Blues game was on NHL Network on Sunday. I guess it's out of market. Uh, it was locally, it was uh, Bally's Midwest Extra. And and so I guess that's probably on ESPN Plus now. But and then it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are for that. That, but, you know, some that games... is the most arbitrary, weird rule ever because they've had that for a while. Out of market games, or in, I guess in market games, forty eight hours after. Why not right after? What is the well, point? Yeah, I, I, I have no idea. So, but, but uh, for some reason, uh, even though programming changes are made uh, days in advance scheduling changes for broadcast television for these games you know, with the Cardinals, for example, bumping the blues to uh, uh, Bally's Midwest extra. Uh, my spectrum DVR uh, never picks up that change. They days in advance. It doesn't refresh, doesn't get the new schedule and it, and it records, you know, Bally's Midwest, like it's the blues game, but Oh no, it gets the Cardinals game instead. So uh, my DVR just keeps recording Bally's Midwest and so I have to go through and adjust things in there. And I, I didn't think to do it. I forgot that there was a switch. You know, the Cardinals were on Bally's Midwest. And so this happened on Easter and I had to go home. And then it wasn't on ESPN+. Plus. So I'm like, how am I supposed to watch, watch the fucking game? Um, so this is more of a bitch on Spectrum's DVR, which is anybody who has Spectrum and their DVR, um, their DVR is a piece of shit. It is the worst piece of technology uh, that I've ever had to deal with from a television provider. Uh, it's it's terrible. It's laggy. It's slow, laggy. Uh, the interface sucks. It's not intuitive. It doesn't update. The schedules don't update for sports like I just went over. Um, it's terrible. And they don't seem to care. Uh, TiVo is light years better than Spectrum's DVR. And it shouldn't be. Spectrum has more money than TiVo does. Uh, they should be able to put out a fantastic DVR. They should just use TiVos. They don't. I don't know. I, I guess there's more money in it for them. Whatever. Um, sucks. Uh, ESPN Plus, um, you know, and people will complain about ESPN Plus and exclusivity. Uh, certain games in ESPN Plus, they can't watch them. Well, they, they can watch them. They choose not to subscribe to the service. So that's why they can't watch them. It's not impossible for people to watch games on ESPN Plus. They'll say that. They'll say, I can't watch the game. No, you can. You're choosing not to by not paying for it. So, but with that said, um, having NHL games exclusively on ESPN Plus, you can't watch anywhere else. When ESPN Plus has an inferior interface, I don't know how the rest of you feel about ESPN Plus's interface. Fast forwarding, rewinding, stuff like that, and and, and scrolling through and choosing games. It's awful. You yeah. can't. Okay. So if you, when you get, say, there's no DVR system with, with ESPN Plus. So if, quite often, I will record games, my DVR issue from before. That's how I, that's how I watch games most of the time. I'll, I got stuff going on. I'll, the game starts at seven. I'll get home at eight or whatever, and I'll play the game from the beginning of my DVR, catch up an hour, hour and a half later, whatever, before the third period starts, whatever. Um, but on ESPN Plus, you can't do that. So if I want to watch a game that's being exclusively broadcast on ESPN Plus, like the one was yesterday uh, against the, with the Blues and Bruins, um, and I joined the game a half an hour in, which happened because I was coaching my daughter's softball a practice uh, last night. I've got to bring up the interface, ESPN Plus interface. I don't want to know the score because I want to watch it from the beginning, right? So I've got to like make sure that no scores are being shown on the screen and then select the game. And when you select the game, there's no option to play from the beginning. Why is there not an option to play this game from the beginning? 
if you play, if you cl- click on the game to play it and you choose which broadcast you want to watch, uh, it'll automatically join live TV. So I ha- I know it's going to happen because it sucks. I've done it before. So, so, so I have ask. to pa- pause let, it right away. Ask. Yeah. Let me ask. I'm going to break it up. Sorry. Um, yeah. When you go live, is there an option to at least maybe rewind to the beginning? That's what I'm saying. That's what I was going to say. You, I pause it right when I play it. And then I have to like make sure I'm not looking directly at the screen or have the oh. bottom covered or whatever. So I don't see the score and oh. then rewind it. And also when I'm rewinding, you can't, it doesn't show you the progression of the game while you're rewinding or fast forwarding. It's just a still from when you paused it. And so oh. you you see the you see the sliding move across, but the screen stays the same. So you don't know where you're at in the game when you're rewinding or fast forwarding. So I rewound it. And so and I rewound it to what I thought should have been about the beginning, and I hit play, and it was on the this game will start shortly screen, which they for some reason start an hour and a half before the game starts. So there's 90 minutes of this screen, so yeah. you don't know when the game starts on the timeline. So you on Cut the timeline you have to guess. You Cut have to guess off. And the timeline, the, the slider, the, the the play bar, you have to guess when the game is starting. You have to rewind so far. And I don't want to rewind. I don't want to like rewind a little bit and then play and see it and then catch the score. That's the worst thing in the world for me. I'm sure others exist out there that it's the worst thing in the world to find out the score of a game when you recorded it, right? Or you want you're trying to catch up, watch from the beginning and then catch the live TV. I hate knowing this. I hate being told the score. It drives me bananas. So I do everything I can to not see the score. That's my evening. I got oh, my next two and a half hours is planned and, and it'll ruin it. So yeah. So, and then I got to rewind into the, this game will start shortly and then fast forward little by little, you know, until I get to where the game, the intro is, is playing and then I can watch it. It's a fucking hassle. And ESPN has all this money in the world and they can't, and this technology exists, you know, give people the option play from the beginning or play from, you know, uh, live TV uh, and, and and allow people to see where they're at in the game as they're rewinding or fast forwarding. <sighs> have, okay. Have you seen, uh, have you tried watching any other sports on ESPN plus like, like that? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So like a basketball game's gone or whatever. Yeah. C- does it give you the same exact problems? Yeah. Same thing. So it's, it's same not thing. just a hockey thing. It's an ESPN plus thing. That's what I'm saying. ESPN. Jeez. I'm not. It's not hockey. It's it's ESPN. ESPN Plus. No, I that, know, but I'm saying they don't treat hockey differently. They do this with no. all of their streaming platform with right. all the sports. Right. Oh but, my but god. When, That's awful. When, especially when they have exclusive. You can't watch it anywhere else. You have to go to ESPN Plus, which is already a hassle for some people who don't have it. You know, so they can't watch it. But for and so I already pay. For, I pay for the service, and it's just. It's it's just like they they they're doing the bare minimum with this stuff. That's awful. Um, and while we're on ESPN, uh, the fucking shots well, on goal. Well, hang on. Before we get into that, I, I just want to say the the part where you say that there's that screen for ninety minutes. That's the game yes. will start shortly. I I don't I I really hate to minimize people's jobs, but like doing video editing, the very le- limited that I've done and the limited I know that you've done. That is very easy to take off. You literally like while the like the game gets going, the coverage starts and it is very easy for them to go in and say, hey, go in and clip off that first uh, 90 minutes of that screen. So that way when people rewind, it goes right to when the coverage starts. That's not hard. That is concept, shocking right? that they can't do that. Yeah. I don't know if all sports are that way on ESPN Plus. I haven't watched a lot of. That's uh, what I was asking. If it's yeah. if it's like that with the other sports too, or if they're just lazy with hockey. I don't know. I don't oh, know. awful! It, it it's bad. It's bad, and I think that's even. I think it's even on games that you. Uh, well, I could be wrong about that. Games that are already completed. Um, oh, that's I, it bad. might just it might just be on games that are still going on. I'm not sure, but that's still. Bad, with that though. said, I don't know why they start. Broadcast the minute that coverage starts, start shortly. you can you can clip that off from the recording. It's really yeah. easy to do. I don't. It, it's 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 just. I mean, you know, it's it's a first world problem. But you know, it, it's frustrating when the technology exists out there and it has for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's these are easy things to implement, and they just don't. Again, and like the shots on goal being on screen on ESPN. They'll they'll flash it up there every once in a while. Remember back in the day before they had 
the Fox box on the screen that show the score the whole game long. Every once in a while, they flash the score up and then mm-hmm. take it off. Yeah. I, I as a kid, I always said, or they put the sh- the the clock on the screen, uh, just for a just for a moment and then take it off. I'm like, as a kid, I'm like, leave it on the whole game. Yeah. Leave it on not? the corner of the whole game. Why don't Why don't leave it on the whole game? The, it's, the ESPN will they've got that box in the top left that shows the score and the teams, but they don't. And the, and every once in a while, they'll attack on the shots on goal and shit. I'm like. The whole game, leave it up there. The Bally's leaves up the whole game. Yep. Uh, other regional networks leave the whole game. I, I think ESPN TNT does. does. T, I think TST, TNT does. Uh, NBCSN did not. They yeah. never, the entire time they had NHL games, they never put the shots on goal permanently on screen. It was always a, a, up for a few seconds, then they'd show it every 10 minutes or so. Frustrating uh, as hell because Bill, I'm like they, they mentioned during the show during their game last night, uh, Bruins out shooting the Blues sixteen to six in the second period. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that number because you're not showing it to me. I can look at my phone or something. Uh, real quick, Bill confirms that with soccer, it's the same thing with uh, okay. the 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 ninety minutes before. That's God, that's ridiculous. Stupid. It's just dumb. Yeah. And, and and you you bought the exclusive rights to the NHL and you you got tons of other sports on there. Uh, figure it out. It's it's yeah. awful, um, and you know, speaking especially from a guy who uh, quite often does not get to watch games when they start. I'm joining them in progress, but I want to watch them from the beginning. And on ESPN Plus, it's a pain in the ass to not see the score and get back to the start of the game to watch it. It sucks. Yeah, that's that's a lot different than my problem. I used to have when I lived with my parents. I get home from work. I would text my dad as I'm leaving work. I am not listening to the game because it would always be the end of the game. And I'm like, I'm not listening on the way home. I've got it recording. I'm going to watch it in my room when the game, when I get home after I shower and and eat, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the game starting at like 10 o'clock. And I would walk in the door and my dad go, yeah, big four, one win for the blues there. And I'm just like, you do do it on purpose. I'm like, you asshole. Oh. I would get, and he'd laugh at me. Oh, and, I, I oh, have yelled man. at people bad before that. Oh, before. I used to go off on him like you fucking prick. Why would you Pe- do that? People know better than to say the score, uh, or even hint that they know that something happened in the game. I, I want them to act like the game hasn't started yet. I don't yeah. want to know that. I, my, my mom one time told me. You know, when I got home from work and I recorded the game, this was VHS days, right? The uh, recorded the game. I was at work. I get home late, and I was I'm gonna sit down on the couch and watch it. And uh, I get in the front door. And my mom goes, "You wanna watch the Blues game?" I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "This is a good one." And I'm like, ah, "Don't, don't, don't say do that. Don't, that yeah. means they won, or or probably." And I'm like, "Jesus Christ, don't a do lot that." Of times, <laughs> a lot of times, my dad would lie. So like, he would be like, "Oh, big four one win," and then I find out they lost like three to two. But it's Even like, then, yeah, it's and then that. when he wasn't messing with me, the the least he would give me, he'd be like, oh, you make sure you're paying attention halfway through the second. And I'm just like, Dad, don't fucking tell me anything. I don't want to know you know, anything. I was watching the Jay Bowmeister <laughs> game when his heart, heart stopped. Yeah. I was I was on the treadmill, and I was, I, I was behind, probably an hour, hour plus behind, watching the game on DVR. Um, and... Amy texted me and said, are you watching the blues game? And I said, uh, no, I'm, I'm behind. Or she, I think I'm not sure what the, hell, what the exact conversation was, but she goes, are you watching the blues game? Something serious just happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I'm like, Oh, okay. But she didn't give me any details. So then I'm just like waiting for it, you know? Yeah. And so, and I, I don't want that either. I, I, I want to be watching the game like it's live. That's, yep. that's, I don't want to, I don't want any hints. I don't want any, uh, nothing. And it drives me absolutely bananas. If, if I hear otherwise, I told you the story about the time that the playoff game, the blues and the Canucks, this yep. was, uh, when we had Osgood and, uh, game six. yeah, we were up three games to two and, uh, game six, I was recording, I was working. Uh, late and I and a buddy of mine came in the theater when I was working and uh, the game was over and he comes in and I knew he's a blues fan and I said don't tell me the score do not say anything and he goes I won't tell you the score all I'm gonna say is game seven is gonna be great yeah what an and I'm ass like, 
I'm like, we're up three games to two. That means we lost, you dick. And then I'm like, oh, was he fucking with me? Was he just screwing with me? I'm like, but even then, sitting there, my mind's going crazy, and I hate it. Yep. And sure enough, that was the we lost, and then we lost game seven. I mean, it's and one so, thing if it's like, you know, don't tell me what happened in game one. Okay, well, I'll tell you that game two is going to be great. Like that's a much different conversation. Well, it, and even seven. and even. The, and even then, though, yeah, it is much different. But even then, something happens in game one to make game two greater yeah. than usual, right? So yeah. then I'm waiting to see what it is. And that's all I'm thinking about. Is this it? Is this it? I'm like, I, 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 you know, I, it's probably a problem I have. I'm just letting people know that, you know, don't fuck with me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. <laughs> when, when, if I'm behind, that's why you, know, you don't see I'm me on at, social I'm media. 99% I'm, I'm off, I'm off of the social time. media a lot of times. If I'm watching it uh, on DVR, obviously I'm not commenting. So that's why half the time I'm not commenting during a game because I'm I'm not caught up live TV yet. Yep. And I'll admit, uh, for me, I've pretty much just accepted that I'm going to get spoilers. So mm. I pretty much I'm only watching games live now. Like it's rare where I'm like, I try to. Okay. It's it's hard. It's really hard, man. I I'm, I applaud you for trying. Still, I gave up a couple of years ago. It's probably about probably about half the games I'll I'll get to watch live. The other half I'd say just DVR. Just especially now with with stuff starting up with my kids, um, with stuff they're doing, softball and all kinds of stuff. They got stuff going on. So that's why I try uh, to not message during games, uh, yeah. to you when we're in our Slack channel. But every now and then I know even we, yeah we get even when, even when you do a I I, I don't watch. Even when you do text, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm on radio silence. Typically I don't look at it. If, if I'm behind the score, if I'm behind live TV, I don't even check my, I hear notifications. I don't check it. I, I'm just yep. not on my phone. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I don't, I, because I will see something and I will, it's weird because if I look at my phone and I see notification, it's on Slack and it's from you. I'm like, gosh, I hope it's not about the game, but my eyes just go to it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't even look at my phone. Hmm. Good call. Hey, by the way, Let's Go Blues Radio got canceled four hours later from Kurt. Oh, no, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you you good? You yeah, get it all I mean, no, with, with my with my bitching. I I think I, I think a lot of people have the same issues I do with that stuff. I just and may, I'm probably more picky than maybe some people are. Some might not care. Uh, but, um, I'm sure there are others out there like me that, that, uh, have these uh, annoyances with the way ESPN handles this. It seems like such an easy fix for such a large corporation, right. With all this money to be able to give these options with their live streaming, their streaming service. It just, it's, I, I'd love to be able to ask somebody in charge that has the power to make these changes. Uh, why, why don't you do it this way? What's the reason? Yeah. Yep. I hear you. I just realized because I've got both my rings on, I could pull the Patrick Wah anytime I want now with like a Sabres say. fan or like a Canucks <laughs> fan. Like, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. My Stanley Cup rings are plugging my ears. Sabres won the trade. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, Hart Trophy race. Uh, it's pretty heated right now. Uh, if you ask me, there's one guy in, in the lead, but I don't know. A lot of people might disagree. You may even disagree. Igor, Igor Shesh-Turkin. Pretty much is the New York Rangers at this point. I uh, recorded his second straight shutout for the Rangers uh, last night, defeating the Jets 3-0, kind of dampening their playoff hopes. Uh, Rangers are rolling a three-game shutout streak as uh, Alexander Gor Georgiev uh, shut out the Flyers 4-0 uh, last week. Uh, as far as Shesterkin goes, yeah, whatever. Uh, he doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as Shesterkin goes, 2.01 GAA and a 936 save percentage. Both lead the league by a long shot. Uh, going into tonight's broadcast, might have changed with some of the games tonight. But um, Frederick Anderson was number two with a 2.17 GAA. And uh, Sorokin, Ilya Sorokin, was number two in save percentage with a 927. So he is 201, 936, killing it. Uh, and then, of course, you got a couple other names in there. Jonathan Huberto is having a ridiculous season. Connor McDavid, I think, tied him for the points lead tonight at 111. Uh, Austin Matthews, 102 points. Leon Dreisaitl, at least 106 points at this point. I haven't looked. But, uh, yeah, pretty pretty heated uh, hard trophy race. Who's your winner right now, Kurt? I mean, 
I'm surprised goalies don't win the heart more often. It's the most important position on the ice. Um, and when you're having a year like Shesterkin's having, the 936 save percentage is ridiculous. Yes. Um, that's really, really good. Um, over 92 is really, really good. And if you're over 93, I mean, that's crazy. And to have the GAA is at two. Um, you're, I mean, that's fantastic. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, Shisterkin's the has been the front runner for a while. It'd be interesting to see if he wins it, but I think, uh, I think he should. I mean, he's that. He, like you said, he's their team. Um, Huber was having a career year. Uh, McDavid's being McDavid. Yeah, um, he he did take the points lead tonight. Uh, he was okay. at one ten going into the night, uh, and Huberto was at one eleven. He must yeah. have had a four point night tonight. So McDavid's now in the lead with one hundred and thirteen points. But still, Huberto, what he's done with that roster. Um, now, granted, he's you know they're stacked. Florida's a damn good team, but to be able to put that amount of points up down there in Florida is remarkable. Did. Did you see the uh, tweet by, I forgot who it was, somebody in Florida, that uh, they went down the Florida Panthers roster and they listed their point totals and they circled all the point totals where they're having career years, like career best numbers, and basically the entire team is having career it's, offensive years. It's ridiculous. It's like a perfect storm down there right now in Florida. And they're all doing it without Joel Quinville behind the bench. That seemed like a yep. long time ago now. Yeah, it really does. Long time. Very impressive. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I think Shesh Turkin is your uh he's your heart trophy winner, unless he just gives up thirty goals in the last three games of the season. I I think it's gotta go to him. Yeah. I and I don't I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I don't think goalies win it that much. No. So I would they I don't mean, I'm let's give it to a goalie. I mean, come on. Yep, I agree. Uh, so rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL, uh, the Seattle Kraken added two minority investors, former Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch. And, and, uh, I don't know if you knew that this was the genre, what it was called college rapper Macklemore. Did you know that was called college rap? What he does? No, I don't even care. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> what now you knows. know. Yeah. It's called college rap. Apparently, uh, college Kraken... rap. why is it college rap? I guess because college kids listen to it. I, oh, <laughs> I have no Lord. idea. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, Kraken CEO Todd Lewicki told CNBC that Lynch and Macklemore uh, approached the team about becoming investors last summer. The NHL has just signed off on the deal earlier this month. Uh, Lynch will actually be a part of the NHL's Hockey is for Everyone campaign. And Lewicki told Lynch, uh, said that Lynch has expressed interest in shadowing him to see the ins and outs of a hockey CEO's operation. Um, well, it makes you wonder if he's, if he's doing that because he wants to just learn professional sports management or okay. if he's really interested in doing hockey management. Well, I mean, did you see um, before the season uh, when Marshawn Lynch was part of the whole, the whole launch of the Kraken, he was there, he was interviewed he didn't know a damn thing about hockey. No, <laughs> no. It was. I think maybe he's maybe he's gotten into it a little bit this season. Uh, it's more than possible, I guess. Um, it's interesting. I mean, being a Seattle guy, it could be. Uh, you know, he so he's actually becoming an investor, not just a PR guy for the team. Yeah, no, he's he's an investor. Apparently, he was the one that approached them, saying okay. he wanted to invest right. in the team. All right. Well, I mean, you know, sport, uh, athletes invest in all kinds of things. Um, I th I would think uh, a team like the Kraken, uh, you know, a, 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 would be a smart investment. That seems like a sports teams, especially at the ground floor, seem like they should be, you know, fairly. I mean, sports teams make money. So, yeah. As opposed to you hear about a lot of athletes. Uh, was it? Uh, uh, um, uh, what was his name? He used to pitch for the Phillies. Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling lost a lot of money with bad investments like friends who like almost scammed him out of money with bad investments on uh, crappy products and stuff. He lost a shit ton of money. Yep. Uh, so I, I would imagine something like this is probably a little more stable. Uh, video also surfaced. I don't know if you saw it of Lynch doing donuts on the team's ice uh, on the Zamboni. So yeah, he's, he's uh, having fun with it. Okay. 
I think that can, see ruin, it? that can ruin the eye service. No, I didn't. But yeah, he was I, he was doing some donuts. Okay, I assume that was approved because that can ruin an eye service. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Kraken had a game that night, so I'm sure they right. went over it plenty of times after he did. <laughs> At least I hope they did. Uh, so the playoff picture right now. Um, so for uh, the Western Conference Central Division, uh, Colorado is far and away in the lead and they are going to finish first there's no doubt uh they have clinched the division already at 116 points right now the blues and wild are tied with 103 points but minnesota does have a game in hand on the blues uh and then as far as the pacific division goes calgary will take first place at 104 points um and then edmonton at 96 points los angeles at 92 points now the wild card is where it gets interesting Nashville, again, will finish as a wildcard team, I think at least, but definitely not in the top three of the Central Division. Uh, they they have 93 points. Dallas is your second wildcard team right now with 91 points. And uh, all at 77 games played. And the Vegas Golden Knights are in action tonight. So they will actually be at 78 games played. Uh, they have 87 points. So there is a good chance, very good chance at this point, that we do not see Vegas Golden Knights in the playoffs. And the Knights are losing to the Capitals two to one uh going into the third right now, too. So I think uh, if, if they, they lose they, tonight, it is done. The, well, I mean, I think they're already done just because of the hill. They're what, four points back? What is it? Mm-hmm. Um they and there's only oh, there's not many games left. Um, they'd have to win out and have teams play under five hundred ahead of them. So uh and they're losing now. I I just think it's too big of a hill to climb and they've they shot themselves in the foot with poor play and they've had injuries, a lot of injuries. Um, so it's just not their year. It's a shame. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Um, and then let's also add that Vancouver is right there with them at 87 points and 77 games played. Yeah. And they're playing too great low. hockey. But I'm they just are, saying but... it that makes it even harder for Vegas because right. they got another team that's that's trying yeah. to make it too. I think it's too little too late for Vancouver, though. They're Probably. Gonna, they're going to just miss it, yeah, after that yep. horrible start they had the season. Oh, ridiculous. But, yeah, they've turned it around since, and they're playing great hockey. Uh, but, yeah, Vegas, interesting. Man, it's going to be an interesting offseason for them. I, I can't wait to see them miss the playoffs. Me too. Uh, Chris Bray in the YouTube chat says, uh, Matthew Kachuk passed Keith tonight. Keith Kachuk with 99 points. The most uh, Big Wild head was 98. Um, I was waiting for that to happen. Um and Matthew Kachuk is going to get to 100 points this season. And it's probably the, and this was talked about on social media, probably the quietest 100 point season uh, that I can remember. I mean, no one's talking about him. And he's yeah. having a, an amazing year. Yeah, he is. He's having a, yeah. Just, but that contract, contract boy. Year. Contract year, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford Yikes. him right now. No, absolutely not. You would have to be moving a lot of pieces to get him. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that'll wrap up the show, Kurt. You, um, you have anything else to add? I don't. Uh, next game is, uh, again, is tomorrow, right? Against, uh, who we playing tomorrow? I already forgot. I did too. I had it up and I forgot. We are the worst hosts ever. Uh, Blues at Sharks, 930. That's right. That's right. Yep. 930. Late, late game, which I like late games. People hate them. I like them. I like them too. Um, yeah, good late game. And, uh, hopefully we'll see, uh, you know, we haven't been on the West coast since the start of the season. So it should be interesting yeah. to see that one. I think I like the West coast games because typically I do get to watch them live because, you know, stuff's done and over with, and the kids are about in bed if they're not in bed already. So it's, uh, yeah, I, not too much of a problem watching live hockey on the West coast for me. They got kind of a crazy swing coming up because they've got uh so Thursday they're in San Jose, uh Saturday they're in Arizona, and that's a nine o'clock start. And then Sunday they turn around and they are uh back in Anaheim. So they leave California, go back to California, uh, and that's a seven thirty start local time. So who's that interesting the sh- who's schedule? That? The Blues and Ducks. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, yeah. Arizona's not that far, not that far from the no, but still interesting. Why not yeah. play Anaheim first and then go to Arizona? But NHL has their reasons, I'm sure. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. 
and they don't well, and they're they're back they're back to back nights too at yeah. Arizona and Anaheim. Yep. There's no no travel day. Huh. Yeah, and I said I said 7:30 on Sunday. That is local time. They were playing a uh, 5:30 local local time for Air, for Anaheim. So that's a 7:30 St. Louis start. So hmm. uh, not a late one Sunday. Well. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, well, and Chris Bray did say, uh, "Can't wait for the 8:45 p.m. playoff starts at home." <laughs> Woo-hoo! Yeah. yeah, that that the, the the bitch fest that will be social media is gonna is gonna happen uh, as soon as the uh, playoff schedule is set. Yeah, we're playing Minnesota, <laughs> 8:45 in St. Louis. I Minnesota. will say that that does, what, especially when I was in the media covering the games, it really did piss me off because it. There was a game I remember where they started at 8:45 with San Jose here. Um, or I guess it was 8.15, whatever time it was. They ended up going to overtime, and then I had to do a write-up. I had to, you know, go get the interviews. I didn't leave the rink until almost 2 a.m., and it was like, Jesus, I got to be at work tomorrow at 8, you know? It was, ugh, that kind of shit just drove me crazy. Vegas is tied up. Oh, they they did, didn't they? Yep, 2-2. Well, uh, after the show's over, I'll uh, kick back and watch the rest of this game. Yeah. Um. Uh, Matt Harris in the YouTube chat says, between Brady and Matthew, if you could only have one, which would you choose? You want to go first, Jeff? Oh, that's a good it, one. It's a no-brainer for me, but, I mean, I can see why someone would choose the other. I'd go Matthew. I, yeah. I just, I, 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 I like um, his style of play. I like his arrogance. People hate him, and I like that about him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think Brady has a lot of that in his game, but I do think Matthew does. has it a little more. Yeah, Matthew's uh yeah, I, I don't and to be fair, I don't get to see Brady play as much as I do Matthew. I don't watch the Senators that much. Um I watch Calgary more, but uh, I, I just like I like Matthew. I like his attitude uh, a little better. Um they're both fantastic. Would love to have either one. Would love to yeah. have both. Yes. But uh Jesus, I don't know how that would ever happen. No, um, uh, but no, you know I, what? I, I agree with I, you. I'll go Matthew. I bet you, I bet you before their careers are over, I bet you one of them plays here in St. Louis. You think so? I think so. Uh, eventually because just because of, they seem to have a quite a bit of love for St. Louis. Um, and that just strikes me as 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 uh, somewhere they'd want to play, and they they grew up Blues fans. Their dad played here. Uh, the the All Star game that was here that was pretty cool with Matthew Kachuk wearing the Cardinals uh, 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 hockey sweater. Um, yeah, I I I I would I would bet one of them plays here before their careers are over. Maybe later in their career, you know, uh, after their huge contracts done, maybe a. A uh, three-year deal at the end of their end of their tenure to uh, to play here. I don't know. We'll see. That'd be that'd be fun though. Yeah, it would be. I hope you're right. Uh, so support for Let's Go Blues Radio is brought to you in part by ID Life. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, and looks like it is now three they, two. Yeah, they Golden Vegas Knights. just scored the scored ah, again. again. Yep. So they may uh, they may still be in the playoff hunt. We'll see. Washington needs points too. Yeah, so. they do. Uh, so ID life is the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your DNA. Visit rockin that ID life.com for more information. That's rockin that ID life.com and get 10% off by emailing Dustin at rockin that ID life at gmail.com and tell him let's go blues radio sent you also by center ice brewery, which provides drinks brewed in our fair city and is available throughout the city and county at numerous grocery stores, liquor stores, and bars, including at Enterprise Center. Visit centericebrewery.com to find a vendor near you. That is centericebrewery.com. Do we ever get confirmation that they are at the St. Clair um, Friar Tucks? Because I believe Brandy said that they were. Uh, Aside from her, we have not had confirmation. So. When do you guys need to make it out there soon? Yeah, well, they're not in the Friar Tux in Edwardsville. Okay. So you think if they were at the one in St. Clair, they'd be here, but who knows? No. Yeah, let's get on at Center Ice. Get get your get your asses over to Illinois. Unless they are at the Friar Tux in Edwardsville now. I have not been there in a few weeks, so they could be there. All right, give it a shot. Take a look this weekend. 
Uh, that will do it for episode 32 of season 10 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. Let's go Blues Radio. Thanks for listening, and thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the show. Cheers to all of you, and cheers to our podcasting audience as well. For Kurt Price and the On Assignment Bill Day, I'm Jeff Ponder, and this was Let's Go Blues Radio. Until next time, everyone, let's go blues. Suck it, Vegas. Let's go blues. Hang on. It's not wanting to load. There we go. Uh, the Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. A look at sports. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. I want you to have a heart attack and die so that we never have to do this shit again. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. <laughs> St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Blues, have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues? They've only just begun, they're on their way to number one, now there's no more blues for our St. Louis Blues. The Blues are on the ice tonight again, they're rough and tough and got the stuff to win. They'll always get one more, no matter what the score. 